connected to each other. So we were no wiser. We'd hear about it later on. We'd hear about it in the 11 o'clock news, which was the only news. Like, remember the good old days when at like 2 o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> all of a sudden the TV, you just lose the TV? I remember as a teenager babysitting. And you'd be like, oh, if they're not home by 2, what am I going to do? Because the TV's just going to going to blank right out, right? It's going to be O Canada. We're going to see the little visual. Have you seen that? I've shared that lately, you know, that little video of O Canada when they were signing off the TV station for the night for six hours or four hours, probably four hours is all that it was. But times have changed so much. So now that we have 24-7 news, you know, is, is that a blessing or a curse, right? So now, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple years ago, there was a big storm of of star um, famous musicians that had died and you know you think back is it more people that have died before because you know people are will post things like what's going on all these people are dying you know and then you get the people that think it's the end of the world and I don't know whatever but they have to realize as much as music's been around as long as people have I'm sure in some sense or another whether it's a guy with a stick and a rock or or whatever, it was still music, right? But we didn't have media. We didn't have ways to share it. We didn't have biography.com. We didn't have, you know, all the sources of connection that we have today. So that's why when we lose 30 stars um, or musicians or famous people in a one-year period, it seems like so much, but then you think, huh, 30 out of 7 billion people on the planet, you know, no, it's not. There's been people, like I say, have been dropping dead. People have dropped dead just while I'm saying this, right? It's unfortunate, but it's the fact of life. It's a fact of our evolution of this is what happens. This is the way the world works. And to my knowledge, to our knowledge, we're the only beings that know that we die. Although we're assuming, right? Maybe cats know all about nine lives and they know how to play them. Hey, why am I assuming? Why am I judging? But, so that's why, you know, these things, <clears throat> excuse me, it seems like such a different world that we're in. But it's really, really not. It's just our perspective's different because we see it different, because we're seeing different things and, and we're more connected to each other, right? Which is probably why, you know, when you look back through history, at the different world wars, for example, you know, back in the day of Hitler, um, he couldn't check on CNN to see what was going down, right? Like, boy, have things changed or what? The countries are so connected with each other. You know, it's a whole different world we live in, and we are seeing changes every day. History is in the making, and these last couple days, there's been some really big stuff come to light, you know, some, some stuff where I hope, um, let's just say... I hope famous people are punished the same way as non-famous people would be. Whether it's, um, you know, to the country, to the people, to one person, whatever. I don't care. But, you know, we want to be all equal. And so I hope that's the fallout we see. Will it be? I don't know. But it's definitely history in the making. So, speaking of history in the making, it's time for the good news. I love the good news. I need a jingle. I have a couple friends that do um, recordings and whatnot. Um, for a living and just some awesome people. I'm so blessed with some wonderful friends, much like you. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to, I'm going to do a little jingle or something positive, obviously to tie in with all the stuff I do because I videotape the good news now and it's on YouTube. Um, I have my weekly positive power, um, five to six minute show. I don't know. I guess that's what you call it. Um, and then my radio show, so I think I need something consistent to tie it all together. So that's exciting, so you'll have to wait with bated breath while I figure that out. So, in the meantime, Paris. Paris has got some cool stuff going on. Now, I'm sure I'll get mixed comments on this one. Um, Paris authorities plan to banish all petrol and diesel-fueled cars from the world's most visited city by 2030. Paris City Hall said on Thursday, Thursday, um, the move marks an acceleration on plans to wean the country off gas guzzlers and switch to electric vehicles in a city often obliged 
to impose temporary bans due to surges in particle pollution in the air. Hmm. Paris City Hall said in a statement, France, that had already set a target date of 2040 for an end to cars dependent on fossil fuels and that this required speedier phase-outs in large cities. This is about planning for the long term with a strategy that will reduce greenhouse gases, said Christoph Nadovsky, an official responsible for transport policy at the office of Mayor Anne Hidalgo. Transport is one of the main greenhouse gas producers, so we are planning an exit from combustion engine vehicles or fossil energy vehicles by 2030, he told France Info Radio. The French capital, which will host the Olympic Games in the summer of 2024 and was host city for the latest worldwide pact on policies to tame global warming, had already been eyeing an end to diesel cars in the city by the time of the Olympics. Paris City Hall, already under attack over the establishment of no-car zones, car-free days, and fines for drivers who enter the city in cars that are more than 20 years old, said it was not using the word ban, but rather introducing a feasible deadline by which combustion engine cars would be phased out. There are 32 million household cars in France, where the population is about 66 million according to the 2016 data from the Argus, an automobile industry publication. Many Parisians do not own cars, relying on extensive public transport systems and, increasingly, fast burgeoning networks offering bikes, scooters, and low-pollution hybrid engine cars for short-term rental. Very good. The ban on petrol-fueled or gasoline engine vehicles, as they are known in the United States, marks a radical escalation of anti-pollution policy. Many other cities in the world are considering similar moves and China, the world's biggest polluter after the United States, recently announced that it would soon be seeking to get rid of combustion engine cars too. Wow, what a big thing that is. Talk about history in the making. Wow. So I went for some um, for a meeting Sunday morning in London, Ontario which is about an hour from here. Um, and it was at the Marriott um, in London. And as I was pulling out of the driveway, because I was parked at the back, because I was running late, because that's how I roll. Um, so I'm parked away at the back, and I'm pulling out to the front. And as I'm driving up, I see these three spots. And I think it was three. It was at least three. And right at the front of the spots, it looked like they had a um, an air pump for tires. So I'm pulling up, and I'm thinking, what the heck? What, like, that's weird. I've never seen that before. And then I realized it's an electrical system for electric cars so that you can plug right in. How cool is that? Because I have thought of that, <clears throat> excuse me, before that, you know, you go out and you get the electric car, you put all that money into it, but then how does that change your life? How long is the, you know, is it good for? Would you be able to go, like, I travel an hour away all the time. I'm, I'm in, um... Chatham once a week, I'm in uh, St. Thomas, I'm in London, I'm all over, and that's just like for work, never mind, you know, I go to Belleville and, and all over the place, um, so how would that impact me? Would I be able to use that car in those applications? So, being that people are supplying um, electric here and there, it's starting to happen, I think those are exciting times. But I am going to say something, um, because I am a documentary junkie, and I'm not saying, I'm just... My understanding is the worst polluter is the cows. Just saying. And I mean like legit cows because they fart. And that's, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. So I think that's maybe right up there with cars as the biggest polluter. Right? Um, so, next story. You know, I don't know what it is with the States um, in Canada. Do you notice a lot of my stories aren't in the States and Canada? A lot of the big things are in other countries. Just saying. So, this one's about the UK. Um, every year, 8 million metric tons of discarded plastic find their way into Earth's oceans. In the past, a majority of this debris was organic material, but that has since been replaced primarily by plastic. One technology, the sea bin, aims to combat this problem, and the UK just installed its first one. 
The sea bin is, as its name suggests, a bin made up of a large fiber net and a dock-based pump. The device is aimed at collecting pollution of all sizes, down to floating debris as small as 2 millimeters in diameter. It's even capable of collecting oil from the water, a priceless innovation in the event of an oil spill. No kidding, that is so awesome. The first implemented sea bin was installed this month in Portsmouth Harbor in the UK, where it will be able to immediately start cleaning plastic pollution from its waters. Now, I think going back, we actually talked about this on the Good News before, um, when they were created, so now they're actually in action. This is so cool. Sure, we can't catch everything right now, but it's a really positive start. The device's creators, Pete Seglinski and Andrew Turto, told the Huffington Post, it's a big mission, but it can be done. In fact, we're doing it right now. See, we can't look at it as a big obstacle and just give up, right? Things can be done. Start small. Baby steps are still steps. Cleaning plastic pollution. The sea bin works by creating a flow of water into the bin, excuse me, bringing with it any surrounding debris that is then caught in the net. According to the Sea Bin Project website, the device can catch 1.5 kilograms, about 3.3 pounds, of de debris per day, with the ability to hold up to 12 kilograms which is 26.5 pounds at full capacity. The creators estimate each sea bin can remove about a half a ton of debris every year, the equivalent of collecting about 20,000 bottles or 83,000 plastic bags. Isn't it just boggling that this is in our ocean? This technology was so promising that its creators were able to raise $260,000 on Indiegogo to fund its creation. No, I don't have a stutter. It's Indiegogo. <clears throat> the sea bin is set to become commercially available this November. If its installment in the UK proves successful, others will catch on and adopt the technology. Indeed, other efforts are already underway and with little time to lose. If left in place, the ocean plastic can injure and starve animals, release toxins into creatures that eat it, and even end up in our food and in our water. Global adoption of plastic collection technology could make a serious dent in this worldwide issue we are facing. And I'm going to add the word there, together. We're facing this together. Together we rise. Together we're going to make this a better place. So, last story. Um, now, this one did come out of the States, but it's for Syria. So, there you go. Um, winter in Syria can be cold. Freezing cold. With over 11 million people displaced since the beginning of the country's civil war in 2011, many millions are without adequate heating or shelter during the cold winter months. A group of MIT students has set out to change that. The team of six, led by MIT Sloan School of Management undergraduate Vic Liu, created Traveler Pack, a light, durable, water-resistant sleeping bag that can withstand temperatures as cold as negative 10 degrees Celsius, with the goal of distributing them to Syrian refugees. Traveler Pack started as an idea scribbled on a napkin, just where so many great ideas start. During a freshman pre-orientation exercise last year, Louis was among the group of students discussing startup ideas when he realized he was interested in creating something that would help people. He wrote the idea for Traveler Pack on a napkin and stuffed it in his pocket so he wouldn't forget it. Traveler Pack was a natural transition for me since I went backpacking and camping growing up. The refugee crisis is a huge problem and I have experience with something that could really help people. With fuel and shelter hard to come by, refugees have few ways to keep warm during the Syrian winters. But a sleeping bag <clears throat> doesn't require battery or fuel. It's a simple solution to a big problem. The idea grew from there, and with the team sewing together its first prototype sleeping bag in a dorm room over the winter. To test it, Louis set, slept on the roof of his fraternity house one night during a Boston snowstorm last January. Temperatures dropped to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, but he stayed warm the entire night. That is so awesome. Absolutely love it. Oh my gosh, and it does actually go on a little bit longer, but I'm not going to read any more. 
But you can find all three stories on the Positive Power Facebook page for you to check out, which with tons more. So I add nine stories a week minimum. So go there. Check them out. So as the cold is coming, I just want to briefly go over. We're not going to talk. Well, we are. We're talking about money health today, right? We're not going to talk about health health, but here's some ways to lower your energy bill. Who hates paying hydro? I do. You do. Everybody does. I mean, we need it, but we know we're being gouged, but it's up to us to make a difference. So control how much you use. So here's your tips. Change your light bulbs. Um, use a programmable thermostat. Go solar if you can. Um, get rid of your second fridge, right? Or you don't need a beer fridge. In the <laughs> We're so Canadian. Unplug the beer fridge for the winter. It's okay. You know, we've had parties. We have a little deck outside um, our main floor. And when we have parties, that's where the beer goes, right in the snow, right? Um, use your microwave instead of your oven. Okay, I'm honestly, I'm torn on that because I don't like microwaves, but you know, it is what it is. If you have one and you use it, then it does have its perks. Um, join the small house movement. It's another idea. Um, and well, oh, don't forget about your lawn equipment. Using non-motorized equipment like a real push mower if you have a small enough lawn. You never have to buy gas for your mower again and you'll cut down on emissions. Hmm, food for thought. And then there's some more. Then I'm sure some of these you'd already know. Seal drafts around doors and windows using weather stripping or caulking. Make sure your attic is well insulated. Get a water heater blanket if your unit is over five years old. Definitely we need to do that. Use natural sunlight for heating when available. Make sure your vents are not blocked by furniture. Try zoned heating and cooling. Um, close off rooms and vents in rooms that are not in use. We do that. Close off your fireplace and the flue on your chimney. Consider warming your bed with an electric blanket on chilly nights. You know another thing, and we do it, is we have a deep freeze. And we fill up the empty space in the deep freeze with paper towels. Because they'll get cold and then the freezer won't keep kicking on as much. Um, I did have an article at some point over the years about more in depth why that's a benefit. But you know what? I'm buying paper towels anyways. They're on sale constantly, like a 12-pack of paper towels. So where are you going to store that? Hmm. Store it in your freezer. Why not? Or the empty spots in your freezer and your fridge, right? Whatever works, because you know what? If you've got five bucks to your name, I would rather see you have it than see you give it to anybody, oh, the energy company, anybody in a big business, right? You work hard for your money. I'd love to see you keep it. So there you go. There's the good news for today um, with some energy tips. I hope you enjoyed it. So we are done in eight minutes. So we'll go back to the stream for a couple more songs. Thank you so much for joining me. I love getting together with you three times a week. You uplift me, I uplift you. We learn together. And we sing these great positive songs, you know. It's like positive affirmations and music form. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs>